You heard what Yash has to say. He's made a very valid point over there by stating that the ED arrest has taken place under the PMLA, which of course has a higher threshold. If you could also expand on that for our viewers. Let, let's understand, the CBI is probing this matter under the Prevention of Corruption Act and the ED is looking at it from the PMLA standpoint. What is the difference between the two? The PC Act, like any other IPC uh, section, looks at uh, uh, the presumption of innocence still proved guilty and the onus is on the investigating officer to prove the guilt of the suspect. The PMLA, on the other hand, mm. upheld by the Supreme Court, puts the onus on the suspect here. In this case, Mr. Manish Sisodia, based, because there is a prime FSI evidence to suggest that he played a ro alleged role in this corruption. Uh, so the onus will now be on him to, in to convince the investigating officer of the enforcement directorate that whatever is being alleged is not true. And that is difficult because how do you uh, really come up with the kind of evidence when you're questioned to convince the IO? That's why you see that in the, in the recent past, people who have been arrested by the enforcement directorate, it has been tough for them to secure bail uh, while the probe is still on. In some cases, like Satendra Jain, you've been in right. uh, jail for about over 10 months. Same with Nawab Malik, there are other cases as well. And that is why uh, the situation has become trickier for Manish Sisodia. And, and, and Arunima, when you talk about the situation becoming trickier, do you think, you know, We've been hearing the enforcement director constantly alleging in this case that Manish Sisodia has been evasive, he's not been cooperating in the investigation. One allegation that's also come in from the CBI as well. Do you think that has only further complicated his situation? So what this defense team of Mr. Sisodia has said is that not giving an affirmative answer to the investigating officer, mm -hmm. not giving him the answer that he's wanting to hear from me does not mean non-cooperation. It does. It just means that I don't want to be a witness against myself. That is a right guaranteed to me under the law. That is what Mr. Sisodia's defense has said. However, there are specific queries from the ED that he will have to answer queries about why so many handsets were changed and the timeline of the change of the mobile handsets and the SIM card. Around the same time that the CBI FIR was lodged, he starts changing his handset. Now, during one of the remand uh, you know, hearings in, in the, the Rouse Avenue court, Mr. Sisodia's defense team argued that he holds a position of uh, responsibility as a Delhi government minister. So when he wanted to change a handset, obviously he couldn't just leave it aside because there was sensitive data in right. it. But what the officers of CBI and ED say is that it's unnatural for somebody to change 18 handsets right. in a span of three months. So there's something amiss there. That's what ED is going to ask him. The second thing, where is that file? The file which contained how the entire excise policy was framed, what was put up before the GOM, where the minutes of the meeting about uh, what really was considered, where is that file? When Mr. Sisodia has been asked about it, he just said, I don't know. So if he doesn't know, does he even recall whether it was his secretary, whether it was some other bureaucrat who was given this file, plus the testimony that has come in from his personal secretary, former personal secretary, from former excise commissioners, completely indicting him for his role. That is what ED will confront him with. And like I said, the threshold to prove his innocence under the right. PMLA is much higher. Right. So ED will uh, try and uh, build a strong case against him. Absolutely. In fact, Arunima, I'm going to also take my next question, in fact, from Anshul, who's also uh, been tracking this case very closely. Anshul,